In this video, we'll look at a composite respiration on a class 2 MO cavity on tooth number 4. So our first step is to isolate the tooth. So we have our wedge in place. We have a tofu Meyer matrix band. As you can see, uh, there is no gap in our proximal box. It's completely sealed off. So a wedge is super essential to use over here. You can use any other system, um, a segmental matrix system, an auto matrix, whatever it is, make sure that it's completely sealed off and you don't see a gap in the proximal box. Um, and also make sure you burnish your matrix band to the adjacent tooth so that when you place your restorative material, you get that ideal contact you're looking for. We always like to use a little bit of bonding agent um, in our tooth in, in when we restore it, even though it's a plastic tooth, because it helps to close some of the voids. Your composite restorative material might not flow everywhere as you'd like for it to flow. So the best way to um, prevent that is by using a little bit of bonding agent and then cure it before you move on with placing your composite restorative material. When you're ready to fill, take your plastic instrument and place a little bit of composite restorative material in your cavity and place it in the proximal box area. And then start condensing it in the proximal box area. It's best to start here because this is where you want to make sure you have a good seal and it's also the part where you're missing a wall. So we like to kind of fill this area first and create our wall before we start filling our occlusal part of the cavity. It's kind of like creating your own class one cavity so that the whole process becomes easier. After we have this layer in place, we'll go ahead and cure this as well. Here I'm adding some more composite material to the proximal box area. What we're trying to do over here is to create that wall that we are missing and we are building up our marginal ridge. So the marginal ridge should be at the same height as the marginal ridge of your adjacent tooth. So you can do this by kind of eyeballing but also using maybe a, an explorer or a periodontal probe to see at what level the marginal ridge is on the adjacent tooth and try to build this up at the same level. So when you're doing this, you can notice how some flash is moving to your buccal and lingual surfaces. The best way to remove this is by using an explorer here and then kind of run it in that gap and remove that excess material. It's always good to do this when the composite material is still workable and fluid. Um, and you can also remove flash that's flowed on to the occlusal surface as well. Because it gets much harder once you cure this material. Now we're ready to cure this and we have a marginal ridge, a wall to work with so that we can start treating this like a class one cavity. Now we have a wall, so we can go ahead and take out our wedge, our matrix band, because we already have a wall and this becomes a class one cavity right here. 
it, that, it, because it's cured, this is not an amalgam restoration. You don't really have to fear for breaking the wall off. Um, so slowly slide it out. There you have it. The marginal ridge is a little high, but we can always adjust it and polish it. Take an explorer and just kind of knock all those excess material that's still sticking onto the tooth. Ensure that this is completely cured. And then you're ready for your next step of adding some more composite material into this cavity. I'll go ahead and use our plastic instrument to add some more composite into our occlusal surface. This is a simple class one that we, can, we all can handle. Condense it to the walls. And as you add the composite material, try to place it anatomically like we're doing over here, condensing it to the walls of the preparation instead of just adding it in bulk. That way, um, you can save yourself some carving and it gives you a more anatomic fill. At this stage, you can either use an instrument like a cleoid discoid carver and start making those initial grooves, designing your triangular fossa and removing that excess material that's kind of flowed over to your buccal or lingual surfaces. You can also use an explorer make the transition smooth and create a little bit of anatomy it's much harder to create anatomy with composites than you can with amalgam but you can do your best to at least create the primary grooves and the triangular fossa that they're looking for
once you've completely cured this restoration now you're ready to finish this so you can use any tapered fissured burr but a red striped one in a slow speed and start by refining your restoration by running it across your lingual incline of your facial cusp and then the buccal incline of your lingual cusp and defining your central groove and just kind of smoothen out your um, restoration but be really gentle with it so as you can see I'm barely pressing on my pedal even though it's a slow speed to ensure that I'm not taking away too much composite I'm merely trying to remove the excess material and create some kind of definition to my restoration as well You can also start defining your marginal ridge area. Like we saw, our marginal ridge is a little bit higher than our adjacent tooth. So you can start taking that down and you can start removing the excess flash that could have flown. Another great instrument to remove excess flash, especially in the interproximal area, is an interproximal carver, an IPC instrument. It looks exactly like a plastic instrument, except it has cutting edges and it's extremely thin and slender that you can take it to your interproximal area and take away the excess. Another great instrument to use, which I'm still trying to master, is a number 12 blade in a surgical blade handle. It's one-sided and it's curved, so you can take it to your interproximal area and just cut off that excess flash that's flowed onto your tooth structure. That's another way of removing the flash. This white finishing point or the white stone burr is a great tool to have in your pocket anytime. It's a great instrument to finish your composite restoration. It has a really sharp tapered tip. It's a one-time use burr and you can use this to define your occlusal surface, remove excess and also smoothen out your restoration. At this point, our restoration is starting to look pretty good. You can also use the same finishing point to finish interproximally, where we might have had some excess material. But be really careful. Um, this burr is pretty gentle, but it could possibly cause some scratches on the adjacent tooth if you touch it. So at this point, our restoration looks pretty good. You can see that occlusal surface has a really good definition and that all starts with the way that we condensed our composite material when we started off with the restoration. So keep your final result in mind as you're going through with it. We've established a great contact. Um, premolars usually have the contact on the buccal surface, in buccal side of your proximal surface, and that's what we have right here as well.